Hello everyone, my name is Super123 and welcome back to yet another video. Today we are going to see if we can beat Pokemon Gold with a team of only one Togepi. Togepi is pretty damn terrible and its stats really reflect this. Its best base stats being in its defenses, but with only 20 base attack for its normal type moves, it's going to take a lot more damage than it can dish out. And with speed that low, that's if it can even get some damage out in the first place. Its move pool is terrible, it doesn't get an attacking move until level 7 which is metronome, which picks a move at random so it might not even be an attacking move. Its only reliable source of attacking from level up is double edge at level 38. TM moves are definitely the way to go in this run, Togebi gets a really wide range of TMs to use and some really solid coverage with the likes of Psychic, Shadow Ball and even Fire Blast. But if you want some same type attack bonus definitely use moves like Headbutt, Swift and Return. It's going to be a really challenging run and I'll probably have to be at level 100 to even beat Red at the game's finale. Here are the rules of the challenge, I can only use Togepi in battle. I can have other Pokemon in my party to use HM moves like Surf, but they can't be used in battle. No items will be used in battle, and no cheats, glitches or exploits. And if you do go on to enjoy this challenge, I will be releasing many more in the future so consider hitting subscribe and staying notified on my next video. Let's get into the challenge. Starting the game using the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to pick Togepi as my starter, replacing Cyndaquil so the rival will have a Feraligator, which I felt will be the best starter for the rival to have to make this more challenging. Can I offer you a nice egg in this trying time? I called Togepi Eggbert because I couldn't think of a good name and this name involved egg. Mm. The defenses are the best stats as expected for our only moves being Growl and Charm. Both moves doing no damage, meaning I will have to reduce all the PP of Togepi's moves to use Struggle. My plan for this was to wait until daytime so I could find Metapod, who only have the move Harden. Our two moves have more PP than Harden, so I'd have to go through two Metapods before I can use Struggle. It does take a really long time, but I would finally get Togepi to level 7 and it learns Metronome. Metronome is a crazy move that picks a random move from basically a list of all of them in the game and uses one of them. This could be an attacking move, stat raising move, stat lowering move, or self destruct. Normally self destruct. But due to the randomness of the move, it is at least some form of an attack, which the rival battle gave us the best moves I could have asked for. I got Thunderbolt first turn, which almost took out the Totodile in one hit, and then I got Megahorn, which is also a really powerful move. Sorry, rival, but the luck was on my side. Speaking of the rival, I named him Poacher. Not because he poached the starter from Professor Elm, but because it also relates to eggs and the cooking of them. But don't cook Togepi. I don't normally show the random trainers, but Youngster Joey is the exception. Plus, this battle was very interesting. From the first metronome I got Pain Split, which basically giving Rattata HP in exchange for mine, which was a bad move. Then I got Psybeam and then Transform. So then I was the top percentage Rattata. It was a pretty wild move to get, and now it's time for the first battle against Faulkner. Before going into this gym, I took out the Sprout Tile first and reached level 14, where he leads with Pidgey. My first metronome was Hyper Beam, which obviously took out the tiny bird. Then it was getting pretty dicey against the Pidgeot, as I had to recharge from the previous Hyper Beam, got Snore from the metronome, which doesn't work because I'm not asleep, and then Fury Cutter, which is really weak on its initial use and resisted. Things were looking pretty bleak until I get the best present from metronome, which was present a critical hit one, and that won us the battle and got us the first gym badge. After this I got a random egg from Professor Elm's aid. I wonder what this egg is going to hatch into? Hmm, if only there was a Pokemon released in this generation that looked like an egg. Maybe that would be it. I also taught Mudslap to Togepi, the TM we get from Faulkner, to give it some type coverage for the upcoming Geodudes in the cave. And despite having only 20 base power, it's a really decent move to have. It lowers the accuracy of the opponent, and does damage so it's flash but better. And from the lowering of accuracy, to a move that never misses. I got this swift TM in the cave I forget the name of, and taught it to Togepi. A stab normal type move that never misses with a 60 base power. It's a great move to learn that can take us through the entire game. I cleared out Team Rocket from the Slowpoke well and went to fight Bugsy, who still gives me the Professor Oak Syndrome. Are you a boy, or are you a girl? I just can't tell. This battle wasn't too much trouble as Swift is a really good move. Two Swifts took out Metapod and two more took out the Kakuna. They were both no trouble at all. Now for the Ace the Cypher. 
and it started to set up Fury Attack that doubles in power every turn that it's used. But Togepi battles through with its good defenses, it gets the win in the second gem battle. And immediately after that is the Azalea Rival battle. I can only use Mud Slap on Ghastly as it puts me to sleep on turn 1, but it also can't hit me back as its only attacking move is a Ghost type move which doesn't affect normal types. It puts Togepi to sleep some more times and reduces the PP of Mud Slap with Spite, but does go down eventually. Zubat is just a two shot with Swift after it misses a supersonic luckily, and lastly we have Croconaw. It gets in a really strong water gun as I go for the sweet kiss confusion. I got extremely lucky with this battle as Croconaw keeps hitting itself, coupled with the swift damage. This means that we can just about win the battle. Poacher says he hates the weak, which leads to a pretty interesting question. Like Croconaw in that battle, if you hit yourself and it hurts, are you weak or are you strong? Now for the forest and it's time for another great normal type move, Headbutt. Headbutt has a really good base power and goes off of stab much like Swift, and I'm very sorry to do this but I had to say goodbye to Metronome. The novelty of using random moves is fun, but won't carry us very far on this challenge. Maybe one day I'll do a run with only Metronome. As I get to Golden Rod, the egg starts to hatch, and ooh, what could it be? It is a Togepi! Who would have guessed? I named it Twitter, as you should all follow my Twitter for updates on videos I'm making, and could be making in the future. A quick detour to the National Park, and I got the Quick Claw, an item that will occasionally let us go first in battle, which is great because Togepi has really poor speed. And now, for the Golden Rod Gym battle to face off against leader Whitney. Oh, Whitney is the hardest gym leader in the series! Sit down and be quiet, because I won this with a literal egg. Clefairy got some good damage in with a critical hit double slap that of course hits 5 times. Two headbutts took it out though. And for the mill tank I used mud slap to avoid its rollout streak getting too high. It got in some massive damage with stomp and after two mud slaps I went for headbutt again. Stomp does considerably less damage this time for some reason as it also keeps missing with various moves. I get it to red health where it uses milk drink to restore its HP. Yeah it drinks its own milk to restore its power. That's weird. But two more headbutts, one being a critical hit, take out Miltang and win us the third gym badge of the game. A cow, cow's milk, and an egg. I can already feel the rage from vegans in this battle. I did a lot of grinding on all the routes I could, including the Olivine Lighthouse, Kimono Girls, and the Burnt Tower rival battle. And this is all in the build up for Moi's gym. Moi having ghost types can't do too much damage to me, but I also can't do too much damage back. My only real option is to get confusion with Sweet Kiss and use Mud Slap. But much like in my recent normal run, the battle with the Ghost Trainer relies on one little move, and that move is Curse. If Morty uses Curse with his first Pokemon Ghastly, the battle is basically over and I have to reset. The damage done by Curse does too much to Togepi and I can't knock out any of his other Pokemon in time, especially with a 20 base power move. If Curse is used, reset. That's the strategy. But the issue is, is that he always used Cursed, and kept outspeeding me so I couldn't even attack first. Ghastly is considerably faster than Togepi, and since Curse can't really miss, it's game over. Is this the run over? Well, in an attempt to beat Morty after countless Curse resets, I grinded Togepi up to level 48 and tried again. It took a few more resets, but I finally got a winning run. Togepi can finally outspeed the Ghastly as I get in a sweet kiss to hopefully make Ghastly hit itself in not use curse. It break through the confusion but to use spite this time for some reason, then I got a critical hit on Mudslap which was a one hit KO. Then is Hortner one of two and this one uses curse first turn and I refuse to grind more to outspeed a Haunter so I can use sweet kiss again. As the damage it did to itself from curse, the damage from it hitting itself and the Mudslap all combined for another knockout. Now it's Gengar, his only Pokemon that can do proper damage to Togepi, as it has access to Hypnosis and Dream Eater. I outspeed and use Mudslap to make Hypnosis even less accurate than it already is. This tactic does work, and I do manage to knock out the Gengar, and with Curse leaving us on 30 HP, the final Pokemon is out, Haunter number 2 of 2. I just have to use Mudslap, and since the Haunter can't do any damage, I have to pray Curse doesn't take me out. But with a final Mudslap hitting, as we go down to 3 HP, Haunter is beaten, and Morty is beaten, and now I can get the Fog Badge and continue on with this Egg Quest. That battle was extremely difficult and annoying to deal with, but now for a sweep against the next 3 Gym Leaders. 
Chuck on paper is dangerous due to him having fighting type Pokemon, so I decided to take on the Rocket Hideout and Gym Leader Price first, as he is the easiest to battle in this run. All of his team were two hit KOs with Headbutt, there was nothing else to say here as he put up zero fight whatsoever. I went to battle Chuck and did actually lose on my first try. His first Pokemon Primate doesn't cause any issues to us, but Polyrath has Hypnosis, Mind Reader and Dynamic Punch, which is a fatal combination. I did win the second round though. The Primate was still a pushover, but this time he actually used a fighting type move to do some good damage on us. Then I used Mud Slap on the Polyrath to make its Dynamic Punch and Hypnosis even less accurate. It does still put us to sleep and refuses to use Mind Reader, which would make Dynamic Punch 100% accurate, but it just went full force trying to hit us without it, and of course it kept missing. It took him a while, but Truck said, Oh yeah, I have Mind Reader, and uses that with the Punch to get Togepi to 6 HP after it wakes up. Dynamic Punch also confuses the Pokemon it was used on, so Togepi is now confused with only 6 HP. But it manages to break through the confusion, hits a headbutt, and luckily, that is another gym badge in the case. Finally, with this mini boss rush is Gym Leader Jasmine. Her two Magnemites are four times weak to Mud Slap, but it still isn't a one shot somehow on them. Luckily, it does make Thunder Wave miss on both Magnemites, which is lovely, as that means we can have full turns to attack the Steelix. Steelix has absolutely massive defense stats, and Mud Slap hits for really minimal damage, as its Iron Tail hits us really hard as I go for Sweet Kiss to confuse it. I keep going for Mud Slaps to stop it hitting Iron Tail, but I ran out of Mud Slap uses and had to switch to Headbutt, which is resisted, and of course, when I get to Red Health, she uses a Hyper Potion. Headbutt keeps getting in around the same amount of damage as Mud Slap was, but it also makes Steelix flinch, making it unable to attack on some turns. It does get in one more hit with Iron Tail, but I do eventually take out the giant metal snake monster with a tiny egg. And it's finally time for the worst part about Gen 2 for hundreds of rival battles against underleveled Team Rocket grunts and underwhelming admins. Going through all this Team Rocket battles is a slog, but we managed to get to the rival battle in the underground, and it's a scary one because Haunter has Curse. His other Pokemon weren't too much hassle, but we just about won the battle through the skin of our teeth. Pokemon that have moves that damage us every turn in a one Pokemon run is extremely, extremely challenging to deal with. You've just got to manage to brute force, and that we did with a critical hit swift to take down Ferelegator, and that was really too close for comfort. The final Team Rocket admin boss didn't even put up any sort of fight, so now I can finally continue my journey without these underleveled distractions. Now despite Headbutt and Swift being great moves, I felt I needed something a little bit better. So on a Sunday, you can go to the Golden Rod department store and get the TM for Return. Return is a normal type move that varies in power depending on the user's happiness. And seeing as Togepi has been going through this whole journey with me, its happiness would be very, very high. At max happiness, the base power of Return is around 100, which is a massive upgrade on Headbutt. It doesn't get the flinch like Headbutt, but that is some serious damage to be dealing. And do I need to sing the praises of Return any more than this battle against Claire? I know the anime has the whole thing about using the power of love and friendship and you'll win, but in this challenge, that's actually the case. Now I have all 8 gym badges and can go to the Elite Four, but not before a rival battle that I actually lose to on my first attempt and have to go all the way back to Blackthorn City. The combination of paralysis and confusion being too much on this occasion and I have to try again. The next try against the rival battle went exactly the same as the one in the underground. Us winning by the skin of our teeth because Curse takes us down to a really low HP again. Once this run is over, I am glad to see the end of Curse. One more thing before I did the Elite Four challenge was I taught Togepi the move Shadow Ball as I feel it will be a lot more useful than Sweet Kiss, especially since the first Elite Four member has Psychic type Pokemon and Shadow Ball would be super effective. Sweet Kiss has been fairly helpful in this run, but I've kissed it goodbye and we are looking good at level 65. The defense stats are reasonable, but that speed is really going to hinder us in the challenge. Our defenses won't hold us out forever, so I might need to grind up a bit more. Our first run was going pretty well until Will Zartu got a critical hit psychic. That and the fact Togepi was confused also didn't help out, but I did keep trying and I just wasn't doing very well. I got up to Koga once, but his fortress used explosion. So from level 65 to level 80, battling the Elite Four members multiple times just because they are better suited for Togepi to battle than the hordes of level 40 Gravelers and Rhyhorns in Victory Road. While going through this grinding session in the Elite Four, I actually got a run where I reached the champion. 
but I threw the battle because I didn't want to accidentally win. The winning run on the Elite Four was also a really good one since grinding on them had basically taught me the teams inside and out. All of Will's Pokemon, with the exception of Slowbro, all fell to a super effective Shadow Ball. Some of his team did get in a bit of damage, but overall they did very little, and it was a pretty good sweep. Koga's team is really annoying to face because of his Fortress being part of Steel type, a type that resists normal type moves. But with Return and the power of friendship, it becomes a pretty swift KO. I didn't even use Swift, so why am I saying it was Swift? But yeah, I did use Swift. The Muck and Crobat both tried to raise their evasion, but Swift is 100% accurate, so I can finish the battle. Bruno was the one who scared me the most because of his teams of fighting types, but the thing about Bruno is that he is terrible in every game. Mark Punch from the Hitmonchan is the only thing that caused me any sort of worry, as it's the quickest thing that can hit us. And as we all know from my traded Pokemon run in Silver, there is no need to fear the Onyx despite it resisting all of our moves. Karen was the last of the Elite Four, and her Dark type team has a major issue that I keep facing this run. A Gengar with Curse. This coupled with the paralysis from the prior Vile Plume is worrying as I don't want to keep on battling the Elite Four, but then the unthinkable happened. The one turn I break through paralysis to attack, Gengar used Destiny Bond, and as I take it out, Destiny Bond took me with it. And just to add insult to injury, Fisherman Chris calls me about his energetic Quillfish. I got back up to the same point as before, avoiding the paralysis by one-shotting the Vile Plume with Return, and taking out the Gengar before it has any chance to move, and beating her last Pokemon on her team, eventually hitting level 85 where I can finally get into the Lance Battle. It took me about 3 tries to get a winning run, he leads with Gyarados and it wastes its initial turn setting up Rain Dance, as Return is almost a one-shot. Another quick Swift, and next is Underlevel Dragonite 1 of 3. Great team building. I hit Return, but Dragonite gets us paralysed with Thunder Wave, which was a key factor in my previous defeats. Luckily, it misses a Hyper Beam and Togepi can get in a Swift for another knockout. The second Underlevel Dragonite is out, and with Return doing the same as last time, this one hits a very weak Hyper Beam, but thanks to Paralysis it can use Hyper Beam again, as I eventually get in a Swift to take that one out as well. Aerodactyl resists normal type moves as it is part rock type, but Return still does over half of its health in one go. Luckily it doesn't get the stat boost from Ancient Power and Togepi gets in a second return. Lance now has two Pokemon left and he sends in Charizard, which is back in its Pokeball really quickly after a critical hit return. 1v1 time against his level 50 Dragonite with half health and paralysis on my end. His Dragonite uses Outrage, but it only does 41 damage. A return takes it down to about one quarter health, but we win the speed tie despite being paralyzed, get in a swift, and somehow win that battle. How the hell did Hyper Beam and Outrage do so little? Honestly, the defenses are really surprising for Togepi. But now I've beaten the Johto section of the game, it's now for the Kanto region. The first thing I did in Kanto was get the machine part side quest dealt with so I could get the wild Snorlax that is outside of Diglett Cave, get the leftovers from it, and equip them to Togepi. The leftovers are a great held item that will restore a good chunk of the holder's HP each turn. Kanto is a really underwhelming boss rush as it usually is. Even the final gym battle against Blue was a bit too easy for a Pokemon too lazy to even get out of its egg. Pidgeot went down to a combination of Return and Swift, and Alakazam held on from an initial Shadow Ball and sets up Reflect. It does go for Recover, but it doesn't heal enough health to survive another Shadow Ball. I had no real counter for Rhydon, so I just went for a few Mud Slaps. I was going to try a Return to test the waters, but predicting another Mud Slap, Blue sends in Gyarados but that gets hit hard by a return and the sandstorm damage. Rhydon is out again and with Mud Slap and Shadow Ball we get the accuracy and special defense drop, which is useless because Shadow Ball is a physical move in Gen 2. Two more returns beat the Rhydon and next up is Executor who wastes a turn charging with Solar Beam and faints, leaving Blue with his Arcanine who faints to two returns, despite Blue's best attempts to heal it every turn and its really, really minimal damage flamethrower. Togepi has had some moments where its defences are really quite something. First the Hyper Beam and Outrages, and now tanking two flamethrowers on really low health. Right after the battle with Blue though, I thought, level 91? That's good enough to fight Red with, right? Forgetting I have one Togepi and how difficult it will be. The Pikachu isn't much of a problem, but the Snorlax and Espeon are two different monsters. Pocket Monsters. 
I keep trying and always the same result, Pikachu would use Charm to lower my attack stat by two stages, which affects all of Togepi's moves. Then the Espeon would raise its defense with Reflect, making all my attacks do next to nothing. This allows it to use a powerful Psychic for a 2 or 3 hit win, and I knew I had to grind more. But to what level? Well, the maximum level of 100, of course. So I proceeded to beat up the Elite Four until Togepi hit level 100, and even then it wasn't enough to beat Red. To do this battle, I would need all of the RNG in my favor. The furthest I ever got in the battle was the Venusaur and then got defeated. So this is when I had to do something I really didn't want to do in this run. Get TM32 for double team. I hate the fact I had to use this tactic because it's such a cop out and I did really well to get to this point without double team. But without relying on insane RNG luck, I won't be able to beat Red without it. I also taught Togepi Toxic and Psychic. I chose Psychic over Shadow Ball as it would actually be able to hit the Snorlax. And Toxic was taught so I could keep damaging Snorlax easier through its massive defense stats. This tactic worked for me in the All Trades run, so why not use it here? Togepi's stats at level 100 are actually a lot better than I thought, but still nothing spectacular. Both defense stats basically being 200 is really decent to see. And now with an even better moveset, it's time to beat this challenge. It starts off brilliantly as Pikachu tries for the Thunder and misses as we set up double team. Pikachu not using Charm is a big part of what needs to happen in my favor. We set up a further three double teams as Pikachu hits one Thunder before being beaten by a lone return. Luckily it didn't paralyze me, so we're looking good so far. Espeon is out next and I just go for the return right away as it misses a Psychic and holds on with a Sliver. It uses Swift to get in a bit of damage, but it faints and out next is Snorlax who I immediately use Toxic on. Its defenses are so high so I try switching between Psychic and Return, but it does manage to hit a Body Slam for a decent chunk of damage, and luckily doesn't paralyze again. One more Psychic takes it out and now it's for Venusaur. Being part Poison type, a Psychic is on the menu as it misses the Solar Beam, and a second Psychic is served up for the Flowery Frog. Charizard comes out and goes down to two returns, not before getting a bit of damage in with Flamethrower, and finally it's Blastoise. Take this out and we win the run. It sets up a Rain Dance as a return does just under half health. Blastoise misses a Surf and one more return takes it down to the most minimal of HP ranges. It misses again and with one last return, Red is defeated and I have beaten Pokemon Gold with a team of only one Togepi. This challenge wasn't actually too bad in hindsight. Togepi's really high defense stats were really the best part of this run, making the big battles against Lance and Blue not doing a whole bunch of damage to it. You saw what happened in that final battle, hardly any HP was lost even when they managed to attack me. And then I just healed it back with leftovers. Maybe if I had got double team a bit earlier then I could have beaten the run at a lower level, but I wanted to try and win without it as double team is a really cheap way of winning these challenge runs. You can beat any game with anything if you have enough double team boosts. The TM pool for Togepi was really quite extensive as I didn't know it could learn so many moves for type coverage. Special shout out to Return for being such a great move. If you're doing a solo run on Gold, Silver or Crystal, play on a Sunday when you get to Golden Rod and get the TM for Return. You're welcome. For my next challenge, I have something planned that is going to be a bit more comprehensive than a single Pokemon challenge. What is that component you may ask? Well. Hit subscribe and hit the bell to stay notified of when I upload next, and you'll be able to find out what that video is. If you do have any ideas for challenges, leave them in the comments section. Thank you for all your continued support on my videos and this challenge, and I will see you all next time.